Hey everyone, it's Patrick. Today I'm going to show you the process for machining a Mark II main pulley. So this is the fixture pallet we use to machine the part. The part starts out as a 4 inch diameter by 1 inch thick piece of 6061 and is machined in two setups. The first setup is on the top of this pallet, but it's actually machining the bottom of the part. And the stock is held by two Mighty Bite Versa grips and two Mighty Bite Pitbull clamps. For the second setup, the part is flipped and it locates using some of the surfaces that were just machined onto a feature that sticks up out of the pallet. And it's held down by two quarter 20 screws in the back that are put in through the bottom of the pallet, as well as a Mighty Bite expansion clamp that goes into one of the bearing bores from the first operation. The pallet is normally used to machine six parts at once through in each setup, but for this video we're only going to use the left positions. Here is the pallet loaded in the mill. On the left is the view of the actual part being machined, and it's worth noting that I am manually turning on and off the coolant um, so we can get a better view of what's happening. Normally the coolant would just be on the whole time. On the right is the same program running, but the parts already been machined. And this is nice because we can run with the coolant off the entire time and see exactly where the tool is going. So let's get started. We're roughing with a 3 8 inch Lakeshore Carbide Variable 3 Flute. And we're running this at 16,000 RPM, which is the machine maximum, and 480 inches per minute which is a chip load of 10 thou per tooth, um, 80 thou with a cut, and on the deeper cuts it works out to about 27 cubic inches per minute. We have the non-engagement feed rate at 700 inches per minute, and the machine rapids are right at about 2,000 inches per minute. Um, we're drilling uh, a 5 8 inch carbide drill, and these holes are just so we can just drop in and rough out these pockets without needing to do a helical entry. Now we're starting our finishing. Um, this is a half inch YG1 three flute, LU power, uh, 45 degree helix angle. This is a 3 eighths inch YG1. Uh, same tool as the half inch, but just 3 eighths. And even though we're finishing, we're still running at 16,000 RPM. Finishing off these pockets. This is a 5 16th inch Lakeshore Carbide 3 flute, and we're using this to finish our bearing bores. Those first two bearing bores we did spring passes on, just to get the um, diameter right on. This is a backside chamfer tool. Um, we're chamfering the 
edge of that bearing bore, we're, we're not going to be able to reach it on the second hop because that's where the uh, expansion clamp goes. This tool is a 3 16th inch Lakeshore Carbide Variable 3 flute. Right now we're machining the clearances, so when we drop down there, um, the shank of the tool doesn't touch the part. And now we're rest machining the uh, teeth of the pulley. see the clearance between the uh, tool holder and the part is pretty small in order to minimize the stick out. And this is the finished pass on the teeth. Drilling some um, quarter inch clearance holes. And these are the number seven holes. And now we're chamfering. Um, this is a quarter inch uh, four flute Lake Shore carbide chamfer mill. 16,000 RPM, 128 inches per minute, which is two thou per tooth. And I find this to be a good balance between uh, great surface finish and still um, machining pretty quickly. And we're facing this with a three-quarter inch five flute um, Swift Carb AF5. The quarter 20 tap. And we're drilling these holes, which will be tapped to 440. A little chamfer on those holes. And this is the 440 tap. And here is our finished part. Thanks for watching.